Hey, how's everybody doing out there? This is Brian from Let's Imagine More Gathering, and it's time for our weekly booster pack opening. I got a collector booster box of Core Set 2021. Um, I think I've opened a few of these packs. I'm pretty sure I did one on a battle. Well, I can't remember if this is the pack I had for the battle pack competition. But nonetheless, I do have a box of this. To, so today we are going to just open up six packs, and then we'll open another six for another video. Um, but we're going to go over the cards a little bit. Um... I know people have already seen this. This is a little bit behind the curve, but I was able to get this for a pretty good price. And, you know, it's hard to pass up these collector packs when you can get some really neat stuff out of them. Um, so we're going to open this up, pull out six, right. and get to cracking. So I'm really hoping to hit some pretty good um, borderless or showcase version art, specifically in the foil. Uh, I like to do the collecting, and these things are pretty bad A looking kind of stuff. I like some of them. I do like them a lot. Grim Tudor. Full art would be cool. I opened one of those in a, in a that uh, battle pack video, and that was given away to the winner. Uh, it was pretty cool for, to be able to give that to somebody. <clears throat> All right, so uh, get in there. Let's see if we can see this card's pretty good. Not too bad. A little blurry because the lights right there, but I want to make sure it's clear. Not clear, but light, light enough you can see it. We got capture sphere, and then saber tooth muller. I feel like it was a little bit better when I did the test video. I don't know if it's just because. There we go. Sabretooth Mauler. Scorching Dragon Fire. Tranquil Cove. The old ta uh, comes in tap, but you get a life. And we've got Warden of the Woods. It's a six drop creature tree folk with vigilance. Whenever Warden of the Woods becomes target of spell or ability and opponent controls, you may draw two cards. But not bad. It's 5 7. Somebody's probably going to want it to get off the field of play with Vigilance, so if they start targeting it, you get to draw two cards. Pretty neat. It's nice to be able to have that kind of ability in, 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 a, in a deck. Uh, Watcher of the Spheres. Um, that is a two-drop creature bird wizard. Flying creature spells with flying you cast. Costs one less to cast. Heavy on flying deck with blue-white. Um, I know I've seen that in standard quite a few times. Uh, pretty decent type of car, especially if you can get your flyers out a little quicker. Uh, whenever another creature with flying enters battlefield under your control, cat watch this field gets plus and plus five turn. So if you're able to get a couple out that turn, you can beef this flyer up and let him swing uh, with some damage possibly. And then we've got our uh, not our full art. I mean, it's kind of what you consider full art, but it's not really. It's just an, an altered art, showcase art. But the island is just beautiful. The blues. I mean, this the lighting here and the clarity gives it a little bit more of a feel. And I know most people have seen this already. But I like to show it. It's just, it's just, it's just pretty, pretty card. Real pretty, real pretty. And then we've got our first um, mythic rare, Mangara, uh, the Diplomat, uh, extended art or borderless. I guess this is what these are gonna call. I'm just gonna go with borderless. It's a four drop legendary human cleric mythic rare life link. Whenever an opponent attacks with creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you and/or planeswalkers you control, draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. So it's a heavy draw type card. Especially if you're playing somebody that possibly has a draw um, stuff and then might be able to counter or remove your creatures. So it gives you a lot of draw options. It's a pretty good card. And we got the borderless on that one. And we have a, we have a Planeswalker. It is Lohiana Waker of the Dead, the foil version. I know I opened her up in a couple other packs. I've got the um, showcase version of her. I don't believe I've got the borderless, but now I've got a, the foil uh, Mythic Rare Liliana um, Waker of the Dead. Um, she's a four drop. Um, each so you you plus her up one loyalty counter. Each player discards a card. Each opponent who can't loses three life, and then you subtract three loyalty counters. Target creature gets a minus X minus X total turn, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. And then minus seven, you get an emblem with at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put target creature card from a graveyard on the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. Pretty gnarly card. She's only a four drop. Um, all your planeswalkers are very vulnerable when they get on the field of play, and there's just ways to protect them. But she is pretty nasty if you've got a, a specific um, graveyard type setup. Um, and I know that can be nixed in a commander and definitely nixed in standard, but I mean, it's fun to try that kind of stuff, especially with her abilities. Pretty sweet. And then our next one is Ooh, Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose, full art, foil, borderless foil. I'm pretty sure I have one of these already, so this is the second one I've got. I had this in one of my decks because I ran out of v just regular vetoes, and so I was like, I need a third veto in my deck that I put together. It's a black uh, life gain type base up deck. Um, it's pretty simple. It does does some pretty good work, but I had to put him in there. Um, so now I can put this one back in my collection, and I guess I can keep the other one in that pack. I'd like to find another veto to put in there other than the borderless foil, but hey, what are you going to do? 
pretty good. That's a that's a pretty good card right there. Um, so we know what Vito does. He is a three drop legendary creature, um, vampire cleric. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Um, you can pay five creature you control, gain life on ten turns. So this can get really nasty if you got the right kind of setup. Uh, multiple things have been used. You know, um, serrated scorpions pretty useful. Bastion of Remembrance is useful to have on the field to play with this guy. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to really like just you know hurt your opponent and beat your opponent without even really attacking them. Just life gain can get kind of silly. Now a lot of people don't like it, but then a lot of people don't like uh, all the life gain you get when you can start putting out a bunch of flyers and playing that. And people don't like the control deck. So there's tons of stuff people don't like. But in the name of MTG. You're going to have to play this stuff regardless if you like it or not. So you just build some decks that you like and hopefully can beat them. That's all there is to it. It's part of the game. <clears throat> You'll hear me complain about that more often than not, but I'm just saying in general. And we've got Teferi's Protégé uh, Showcase. Those are always neat and fun to get. And our next one is Basri's Acolyte Showcase. And we've got... Garuk's Harbinger Showcase. I got this one. I'm pretty sure I got this one. I hit the foil one. And that's a, uh, a rare. And so Garuk's, Har Garuk's Harbinger uh, is a three drop creature beast uh, hexproof from black. So that's pretty useful. To, I mean, if you know you're playing a black deck, uh, I guess you'd probably put this on the sideboard. It says, whenever Garuk's Harbinger deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, look at that many cards from the top of your library. You may reveal a creature card. Or group Planeswalker card from among them, put them into your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So that can be useful. Um, give it trample and uh, beef it up a little bit, and you can start drawing some pretty good cards. And our next one looks to be a Chandra's Magma Showcase Foil. I like those, those are pretty. I think I've got almost the full set of the uncommons and commons, but if not, I'm hoping to squeeze that with these packs. And boom, we got Containment Priest full uh, borderless foil. So that's pretty gnarly right there. So Containment Priest, uh, really neat looking card. Two drop human cleric flash. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile instead. Um, so if somebody puts a creature from the graveyard during some sort of play but it's not being cast, uh, exile. So that's pretty useful. It's definitely a sideboard type card. I mean, you can have a couple in a deck if you think you just might be playing a deck that's going to have that ability. Um, but it's up to you, but it's still, nonetheless, it's pretty useful against that kind of ability. But that's pretty sweet looking borderless foil, I'll have to say. Just nice, and there's a lot going on there, man. Uh, I'm really digging it. And a zombie slash cat flip token. That's not bad. I mean, pretty good pretty good stuff. We got a Mythic Rare, a Vito, and a Containment Priest. Uh, so pretty good uh, pretty good hit there. Oh, I got two Mythic Rares. Get two Mythics out of that pack. I'll take two Mythics out of any pack. Especially one that's a foil. Alright. So we've got Run Afoul. Run Afoul. Pitchburn Devils. Thornwood Falls. Did I get a Thornwood Falls last time too? No, it was Tranquil Expanse. I feel like I was like, man, 2T lands. Skeleton Archer. And then I believe our uncommon is Fierce Empath. So Fierce Empath, a three drop creature elf. Uh, when Fierce Empath enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with converter mana cost six or greater. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So it's not bad if you really got a, a heavy green deck. Go getting some of the stompies out there. Allows you to go hunt for one for a three cost. Not bad at all. Then we've got Enthralling Hold. That's a five drop enchantment or enchant creature. You can't choose an untapped creature as uh, this spell's target. Uh, spells target as you cast it. Uh, you can't choose an untapped creature as this spell's target. So um, has to be a tapped creature. You control enchanted creature. Nice. So it's a pretty good one right there. I guess I didn't know that existed. That's only a five drop. Oh man. I, I really I think I missed a lot when I played when when 21 came out. I didn't really get into getting a lot of the cards from that and using it in standard and it's still standard. So I got a whole about a whole year before I lose it. So I need to probably start adding some of that into some of my play sets. Oh man, another island uh, showcase foil. These are the prettiest ones, and I like hitting them, but that's two in a row. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. And our first borderless is Pursued Whale, one of my least favorite cards from this set. Not because, I don't know, it's it has its peaks, uh, perks, I guess. If you, if you want to set up a deck based around this guy, you might be able to get to really work in your favor. He is a, a seven cost, so that's kind of the hard part, but if you've got a pretty decent mana build, 
<clears throat> he can be pretty effective. So when he enters the battlefield, each opponent creates a 1-1 red pirate creature token. This creature can't block, and creatures you control attack each combat if able. So spells your opponent's cast that target Pursuit of Will cost three more to cast. So you kind of have protected with three, you know, you're paying the three additional costs to unsummon. So you're paying to unsummon this, put this in my hand, you're paying four. I mean, at the, at the cheapest. That's still kind of a pain in the butt. So you could probably do something gnarly with this guy if you really wanted to build something. Uh, nonetheless, he, he is a, a, a full uh, borderless card here. Um, and we got Thieves Guild Enforcer. So this is a top-notch card right now because this is another one of those things I'm telling about. You don't like seeing this guy come out early because that means you're going to get milled probably all the way down. Well, not every game. Game, but you're probably going to get milled heavily and it's going to be a, a nuisance. So this is a big one for mills deck, mill decks right now. Um, Thieves Guild Enforcer, one drop creature, human rogue, flash. When Thieves Guild Enforcer or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, Thieves Guild Enforcer gets a plus two, plus one has a death touch. So it's stupid sick, especially if you're doing blue, uh, blue black and you're just doing mill all day long. I've played multiple decks in MTG Arena. It's a huge, huge deck, right? Huge, huge deck setup right now to have this in there, and I get it. It works, but when you when you see too many of the same thing being played constantly, it's like, man, does anybody have an idea out there that's not the same setup? I mean, I probably play some that's similar, but I feel like I play the deck I put together. I haven't seen anything quite like it in when I've played. Um, and I try to keep it pretty, you know, open when that when it comes to that. So we've got Temple of Triumph foil, another foil rare. The old comes in battlefield tapped, and when it does, and you can scry one, and you can pay, you can tap it for a land or plains or a mountain. And then we've got Chandra's Pyreling showcase, along with another Liliana's Steward showcase, or another showcase, not another Liliana's, just the first one I got. And we have a showcase rare. Can it be Teferi? Is it going to be Teferi? Or is it's a Teferi, I bet. There's only so many cards that are blue to showcase. Teferi's Angel's Insight. I knew it was a Teferi something. So I've already have like four of these. This one's pretty common to get, it seems like. Four drop, Legendary Enchantment. If you would draw a card, except the first one on your draw, in each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. So it doesn't count towards your draw step, but if you tell yourself to draw um, during your turn, you draw two cards instead of one. So this is huge for the draw, especially the mill stuff when you do Teferi's Tutelage and some other stuff. Um, I haven't seen this played a lot. Um, I'm guessing maybe they're trying to get it done quicker. But if this is on the field to play with Teferi's Tutelage and draw abilities, it would just be game over super quick. Pretty cool show showcase, though. And we've got Chandra's Magmut Foil. I think I've already opened one of those. Yeah, that's the second one I've got now. Pretty popular one to get, apparently. And our last one, I bet you this is Simelum uh, Simalacrum. I can't even say it. But yes, Solem Simalacrum. I could see by the by the color in it. So we got a full art, um, borderless, whatever you call it. Um, Solem Simalacrum. And that is the four drop artifact creature golem. When Solem Simalacrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card on the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. When Solem Simalacrum dies, you may draw a card. So it's not bad um, for landfall type setups. So if you have this guy in a four drop, you're gonna pay it, you're gonna play an additional land if you haven't already read this turn. So that's decent. To have that as an ability for that card, plus when it dies, you get to draw a card. So it's it's a good card. It's it's quality. It's got its perks. It's been around a while, um, but this is the um, updated version for the borderless, um, and it's a foil. And we've got a beast slash saprolin token. So there's pack number two. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna try to speed up a little bit. I just uh, want to kind of make the videos fairly decent length. I don't want to just flip through the cards and be done with it. So village rights, pretty popular one. Open or opt. We got Daybreak Charger, Gnarled Sage, Saggy, <laughs> Gnarled Sage, and then we have Malefist Scythe. Uh, this is one of my. I like this one, and I haven't really got a chance to make this something spectacular. I think it could if you do it the right way. Um, it's two drop artifact equipment, and Malefist Scythe enters the battlefield with a soul counter on it. Equipped creature gets plus and plus for each soul counter on Malefist Scythe. Malefist Scythe. Scythe, oh my god, I'm going to say the words multiple times wrong. Whenever equipped creature dies, put a soul counter on Malefist Scythe. Uh, equip one. So essentially, uh, and there's with the soul counter, so each creature's already at a plus one, plus one as soon as it enters the battlefield, as soon as it's equipped on them. 
And when it dies, you put another counter on. So this thing says on the field of play, and you could just keep putting it on multiple sack tokens, anything you want, and really load this up if you're going to put on a creature that was effective. I mean, there's multiple ways to have this work, especially if you're using Veto. I had it in my deck early on, and then I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it out there, but just based on the concept, if you're able to load this up, you put it on any one of your creatures, give them lifelink, and the creature could be like a 10-10 with lifelink and Veto. I mean, you're hurting them for 10, bam. So there's a lot of different things you can use. Well, I do like this card. And we also have Rewind. That's a four-drop counter-target spell. Untap up to four lands. That's useful. Heck, heck of useful. And our first... Oh, we got to go to the Plains first. Plains um, Showcase Foil. And our first rare showcase it, or borderless is Animal Sanctuary. All right, so you tap it, add one, and then uh, colorless, and then pay two, tap it, put a one-one counter on target bird, cat, dog, goat, or ox, or snake. So it's good if you're using those creatures to pump up your creatures if you need to. Not bad. And then we've got Nyambe, uh, esteemed speaker. Going to sneeze real quick. I apologize, maybe. <sighs> <coughs> oh, uh, whew, excuse me. Uh, she is a two drop. I do have this foil already. Two drop, legendary creature, human cleric, flash when Nyambe, esteemed speaker, enters the battlefield. You may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, gain life equal to that creature's converted mana cost. And then you have uh, pay three, tap it, discard a legendary card, to draw two cards. Okay, and then we've got Temple of Epiphany, showcase, I'm sorry, borderless foil. And that's the old tap it for a. Island or a mountain, and then it comes in tapped, and then you scry one. And then we've got Liliana Steward Bear Showcase. I think we already opened show, some of those. Chandra's Magma Showcase, non foil. And we have a showcase. Something. Boom! We've got Liliana Standard Bear Showcase. That is a three drop creature zombie knight. And Flash, whenever Liliana Standard Bear enters the battlefield, draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. Uh, so, I mean, if you lose a handful of cards, I guess you could essentially draw some stuff, lose some creatures. But it could be useful. Might work out in your favor. And then we've got Basri's Acolyte Foil Showcase. And then our last foil looks like a showcase. I bet you it's Liliana Standard Bear again. It is! <laughs> Happens sometimes. So we got the foil version of that showcase now. One in one pack. That would complete the set. I think I already had the regular one. I think the foil did help me complete the set. Angel flying, angel token, and a knight token. Flip. <clears throat> Alright. So we're not hitting any of the big ones yet on this on these packs. I mean, we're getting some good stuff, nonetheless. But I'm trying to hit them big old mythic borderless. Oh, first card on the block is a swamp foil. Just a regular swamp. Not a showcase, but a regular swamp. Didn't see that coming. Revi revitalize. Good old revitalize. Gain that life. Draw a card. Wall of Runes. It's one of my favorite ones I had when I was doing my high alert deck. It was easy to put out there. It allowed me to go scry and it's a 0-4. But get high alert out there. Or the... Uh, I can't remember her name. I wish I could. Um, but anyways. Uh, it, it allows it to deal damage equal to its toughness. Which is huge. Um, can attack, obviously, but when a high alert comes out, you could attack. And that was one of my favorite setups. And return to nature. Uh, all right, no turn. Nature. Moving on to the uncommons, we've got Alpine Houndmaster. He's a two-drop creature, human warrior. Uh, when Alpine Houndmaster enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a card named Alpine Watchdog and a card named Igneous Cur. Uh, reveal them, put them into your hand, and shuffle your library. When Alpine Houndmaster attacks, it gets a plus X plus zero. And turn X is the number of other attacking creatures. It's a beefy guy, if you can use him right. Havoc Jester. Uh, five drop, creature devil. Whenever you sacrifice permanent, Havoc Jester does one damage to any target. And then we've got our Mountain Showcase Foil. Pretty cool. Pretty cool card right there. And then our first borderless is Stormwing Entity. <clears throat> that one is a five drop fuzzy card. This spell costs three less to cast if you've cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. Flying prowess and when storming entity enters the battlefield, scry two. And then moving on to our first foil. We got Scavenging Ooze. That is the one, two drop. So you can pay a forest exile card from a graveyard. If it, this was a creature card, put a, put a plus and plus and counter on Scavenging Ooze and you gain one life. That can be huge if you're able to build up. I've seen some decks really get kind of gnarly with this. Having enough mana to just start exiling stuff left and right. I mean, you can exile uh, 
as much as you want, I guess, if you need to, but plus if it's creatures, you can start just boosting this guy up. And then gain life. And then we've got Spark Hunter Masticore. Another foil rare. That is a three drop artifact creature, Masticore, as an additional cost to cast a spell discard a card. So you have to pay three and discard a card. Protection from Planeswalkers. You can pay one. Spark Hunter Masticore deals one damage to target Planeswalker. And Spark Hunter Masticore gains indestructible until end of turn. You pay three. It's three four. And moving on to the showcases again. Lonely on a steward. Ooh, Cultivate, Borderless, Pay 3, Search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, and put one on the battlefield tapped and the other in your hand, shuffle your library. Good card right there, nice Borderless, good pickup there for the uncommons, even though it's uh, technically a rare in this. And then we've got Bosri Ket, Borderless Mythic Rare card, Mythic Rare Planeswalker. He, uh, you plus him up one, put a 1-1 one -one counter up to one target creature, gains indestructible on a turn, minus it to two whenever one or more token on token creatures attack this turn, create that many 1-1 one -one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped in attacking, and then you minus it six, get enabled, but being of your combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one -one white soldier creature token, then put a plus and plus one counter on each creature you control. Not too shabby. Chandra's Pyrling Foil Showcase, and then our Foil Showcase, or Foil Borderless is... Scavenging Ooze. So we already got that out of this pack, I think. And now we've got a Scavenging Ooze Borderless Foil. Pretty good hit there. Boom. And then a Cat Boar. Oops. Flipped it over there. All right. Pack number five. Another Mountain. Mountain Foil. We're off the bat. Ward Battlements. Got a Ward Battlement. Wishcoin Crab, a Run of Foul, already got one of those, and then our Uncommons, 5 drop, Chrome Replicator, Const Artifact Creature Construct, when Chrome Replicator enters the battlefield, if you control two or more non-land, non-token permanents with the same name as the one, as another one, create a 4-4 four -four Colorless Construct Artifact Creature Token, 4-4, four -four. alright, not too bad. Shunner's Pyroling, the non-showcase one. Uh, Two drop creature, elemental with lizard. When a source you control deals non combat damage uh, to an opponent, Chandra's Pyroling gets a plus one plus zero and gains dual strike until end of turn. Hmm, not bad at all. And then we got planes showcase foil. Our first borderless is Temple of Milady. That's the uh, swamp and forest dual land. And there's Battlefield Taps. Scry one. And we've got Basri Ket foil. Mythic Rare, Planeswalker. Not, all right, we'll take it. <laughs> Moving right along then. Oh, yes, that's a good hit right there. Asusa Lost but Seeking Borderless Foil. She's a great card. Right now she's she's doing wonders in Standard, and I'm sure she can be used heavily in Commander as well. So two drop, uh, Legendary Creature, Human Monk. Uh, you may play two additional lands on each of your turns. So I used her in my multiple versions of the same type of deck, only kind of tweaked it a little bit. To where it's just nothing but landfall, and you can use it for Scoot Swarm to get that to trigger heavily, or um, multiple other things. Um, you know, you beef up your um, um, Territorial Scythe Cat for its trample, or uh, multiple things like, you know, one of the decks I used. So she's a good card, really good card, good hit out of this pack so far. We've got a Mythic Rare Foil, um, Temple Milady Showcase, or Borderless, now Borderless Foil Rare Asusa. It's a good card. I've got Teferi's Protege Showcase. Along with another cultivate, man, that's a that's a big hits for borderless in this pack. That's three so far. Another cultivate, just one after the other, and we've got containment priest, borderless non foil to go with the foil one I have. We're not done yet, folks. We also have Garuk's Gorehorn. Uh, did they give me two Garuk's Gorehorn? Wow. Can you believe that? And that makes sense. But they gave me four borderless cards, and then they gave me two Garuk's Gorehorn foils in the back of that. <laughs> I feel slightly, slightly ripped, but I got the Asusa, so I'm not going to complain about it. But that's just kind of funny. And they gave me all that, and then they threw those two at the back. <laughs> Thanks, Garuk. And then treasure, soldier token. All right. Well, that's how that works. Last pack for this video, folks. And we got Pitchburn Devils. First one on the blocks there. 
Thornwood Falls, again, not getting a huge variety of my common foils. I'm getting the same ones. Skeleton Archer, got that. All right, dang, man. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Prismite. And our first uncommon is Unsubstantiate. That's a two-drop return target spell or creature to its owner's hand. Not bad at all. Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. These sanctums are pretty nice to get foils in. So this is a two. This three drop Legendary Enchantment Shrine at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. Add X mana of any one color where X is the number of shrines you control. So they're legendary, so you can't have more than one of these out there on the field. But there's other colored shrines that you can load up and be able to kick this ability into where you're going to get multiple mana. And we got a Swamp Showcase foil. All right, first borderless. Coming right up, boom! We got Glorious Anthem. So Glorious Anthem is a four, a three drop creature you control get a plus one plus one. So it's an enchantment, pumps your creatures up just a one, but not bad. We'll take it. And then we've got another Borderless, Borderless cons Conspicuous Snoop, two drop uh, creature. He's pretty cool if you're going to go heavy on the goblins, but even rogue ability, I guess if it works out in your favor, play with top card of your library revealed. You may cast goblin spells from the top of your library. As long as the top of card of your library is a goblin card, Conspicu Conspicuous Snoop has, has all activated abilities of that card. So that's a pretty popular one at one point in time. I don't know if it's getting used as much as when it first came out, but still pretty cool. And then we've got Demonic Embrace. This is another one of those heavy packs. This, this is the third uh, borderless card and second foil. Um, Three drop, enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchant creature gets a plus three, plus one, has flying, and a demon is an additional to its other types. Uh, you may cast Demonic Embrace from your graveyard by playing three life, by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. So, I mean, I guess if you have enough stuff in your in your uh, graveyard, uh, I guess enough cards in hand, enough life, you can play this a couple times. Pretty useful. Could be pretty useful. And next one is Bowser's Acolyte Showcase. As well as a Garuk Scorehorn non foil showcase. And then moving right along to Booyah to Fairy Master of Time. Borderless Mythic Rare. Awesome hit right there. Thank you, Mr. Teferi, for showing up. We've got a four drop. You may activate loyalty abilities of Teferi Master of Time any on any player's turn anytime you can cast an instant. Ugh. I hate playing against this in arena, but it's a good card. Draw a card, then discard a card for the first one. Minus three, target creature you don't control phases out. And then minus ten, take two extra turns after this one. If you ever get to that point, chances are you're going to win the game. Then we've got a foil Bosri's Acolyte. I'm going to guess it's another foil showcase. Um, uncommon or common, since that happened last time. I got multiple borderless cards. And it looks like it. Chandra's Pyrling. So I feel like if the packs get loaded with a, like four borderless cards, you're going to get two showcase um, foils in the back end. Maybe the same one like the first pack that happened or two of the different ones, but that seems to be the going rate on that. All right, I hope you enjoyed that booster pack opening video with six packs of M21 collector boosters. Um, uh, on the screen here we have our seven commenters uh, for this video, and everybody starts with one entry by simply commenting. Um, looks like we had a couple that had two correct guesses and a couple with one correct guess. We only had one person that did not get a guess correct, but that's no big deal. You just need to have an entry for the drawing after the second video, and you still have a possibility of getting it correct. Um, so I guess I need to double check. I think I said in my video, I'm pretty sure that if you guess it correctly, the pack correctly, you get an additional um, entry. And um, XX actually had the right pack. It was pack number six for Teferi. The borderless, so I'm going to up him to three because he gets an additional one for getting that one correct. That's kind of a bonus round. Um, so uh, congrats to those that guessed right to add their entry numbers to get their entry numbers up. So we'll have one more video to increase that. And we will put the names off to the side column here. Um, I will probably have it set up so we can do the selection. I might go ahead and do the selection that day, have it set up, and say, hey, you were good to go. Um, everybody, I, I, I went through the video and I'm hoping I got everything correct. I checked all the all the um, the guesses with the video as it went along. Um, there are some that have some duplicates um, as far as like um, the showcase um, foils. 
there are so quite a few repeats and I know you you know get technically you got two right but really it's just as long as you get it guess it once right that's what counts I'm not going for the duplicate responses because there are some duplicate cards in here so you got one entry for just guessing that right you don't get a second one because there was a second card in there um, that's just not how I was gonna do it anyway so I apologize no big deal because um, I think four of you had guessed a showcase card correctly and there was a duplicate um, again so um, you, nobody's really getting an edge if all four of you got one an extra one so in my opinion I don't think so uh, but nonetheless uh, so there we go uh, the next video is going to be the set the, the second half of this booster collector booster box so six more packs um, and uh, I, I'm only gonna change it up a few times a few things so you're still going to guess any variant um, that um, I might open out of these packs so that's still up there but this time around you're going to tell me what pack I open open up the Ugin um, borderless I believe it's the borderless um, don't get me wrong it's only one Ugin so I will open an Ugin it's either the borderless or it's the showcase um, so don't guess the Ugin because I'm only getting one of them and it's not in there so don't guess it um, so um, you need to pick which pack out of six that's gonna come out of and then uh, I was going to twist it up a little bit, and I was going to say, tell me what um, what token, for the tokens, there's always a token on the back. And I believe they all have, I'm thinking they all had a soldier in the back, or the front side of it. So you can't choose soldier, but I was going to, I think I'm just going to scrap that. Um, maybe just go with the same. The only difference is Ugin. Uh... Not everybody really got a showcase one guessed correctly, so we'll just keep with that for right now, unless I decide to change my mind. Probably won't, nonetheless. Um, so again, pick a foil showcase, uncommon or common. Um, no lands, obviously. Uh, I know we had some people try that one, and that was cool. I was going to do that as a pick a pack, which one's going to be a swamp, but we've already picked one pack, so we're just going to go with that. So uh, I'm trying to speed this up. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. So tell me what Ugin, what pack Ugin's going to come out of. Give me a, a, a variant, a mythic or rare that that uh, that can come out of these packs. Not Ugin, obviously, because he is going to be one of them. And then uh, tell me which foil showcase, uncommon or common, I'm going to pull out of these six packs. So um, that's the only change. It's Ugin now instead of the other one. Um, so best of luck. Uh, and, and then I'm going to tabulate it at the end of the video for next week. It'll be next Saturday, more than likely. And I will go ahead and post the winner. I will randomly select like I've done before. All the names, you'll have a, an entry, your name for how many entries you have along the list. It's going to be a long list, and we're going to tabulate and see who wins. And then that person that does win gets to select between the Path to Exile or the uh, Lightning Bolt uh, Magic Fest card. So that's what's up for grabs. And like I had in the previous video, um, the stuff I opened for that baller box, some of those cards are available for, for um, to sell if you are interested in that. Uh, some people may have emailed me on it. I don't know. I need to double check. I haven't seen anything on Twitter, but there are cards in here as well that can be up for grabs. Um, some I've already opened up. I've got duplicates of. Mostly your standard cards. Now, anything that's a foil rare or mythic rare, I'm probably keeping, but if it's just a regular foil, a regular mythic or rare card that you might be interested in, um, those are up for sale if you'd like to buy those. Um, uh, just email me and tell me what you're looking for, and I'll let you know if I have it. Um, I'd, I'd hate to, I, I, it's going to take me too long to go through the list of stuff. So I apologize, but um, if you are interested, in, just let me know, and I will tell you a price. I'm probably going to give it, you know, sell it for obviously less than a standard fair and eBay price. I'll I'll, I'll fluctuate a little bit, and um, we can we can talk that um, over email. No big deal. But um, that is an option. And um, best of luck to the to, to everybody that puts a guess in for the next six uh, next video or the next six packs, and we'll have a winner uh, next week. So thank you for watching, and uh, catch you on the next video. Deuces.